Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to make input forms in the worksheet that a user can tab through. So I'm going to hit the tab key right now and it goes between the inputs but nowhere else. In fact, I can't even click a cell outside here. So it's going to make it more difficult for your coworkers to mess things up. So they go here and they input a part number, whatever it is, down here, type and they can even hit enter like I just did right there and it just goes directly to the next field and then another value and at the end I'll go ahead and show you a tiny little macro that will make it do this I click save and it goes over here to the new worksheet and saves your data on the data tab and this is a very tiny version of a course I have on teachexcel.com. So if you like what you see here, you can definitely check that out. And there will be a link to it in the description of this video. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, now the premise of what I'm gonna show you here is basically locking and unlocking cells and protecting worksheets. But I'm gonna show you how to make it look nice and how to make it work well. Because if you're only going to allow the user to input values into certain cells, you should make it very clear which cells those are. And for the locking, unlocking aspect of it, if you don't wanna wait around to learn how to use this whole sort of system and setup, you just right click the cells you wanna input something into, go to format cells, protection tab, uncheck locked, and then go to the review tab and protect the worksheet. But if you wanna learn the entire system, that's what I'm going to show you now. Let's go to a new worksheet and start from scratch. Now the first little tip when you are making something like I have in the other worksheet is you wanna give yourself some spacer columns. So I'm gonna make this a spacer column and then I'll put a value here or here. Then I'm gonna have another spacer column and a value here and then a spacer column here and maybe here. So maybe H will be the buffer between the border. Now I'm gonna make H and I'm gonna hit Control and click B as well. And I'm going to adjust the size of one of these so that I make H and B the exact same size. And that's the trick for that. Now let's go ahead and do the same with C and G. So they are kind of like buffers of buffers, I suppose. And now what we're going to do is let's go here and let's make our part. And we're gonna have another buffer row and then we're gonna have type and then we're gonna have value. I think that's what it was, part type value, yes. And we'll go ahead and make these three guys bold. This will be a spacer. This will be input, input, input. And we're going to put a button down here. So let's go ahead and make a nice, neat little button. Shapes. And it's off the screen right now, but I'm going to choose the rounded corner rectangle. And make a little button. And just start typing. Save. And let's hit escape to get out of that. Okay. Go to the home tab. And I will center the guy and bold him. And that's pretty much all that's needed. Last thing is right click size and properties and let's go to properties Don't or let's go with move, but don't size with cells This is really good so that when I change column widths, it's not going to change the size of my button Now I know how much space I need pretty much so let us create the border for the form All right border now let's gray the inside and we're almost done actually. All right, now click here, 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 make it white. All right, and let's make this a little smaller and let's make this a little bigger. And maybe I could go ahead, delete this guy, make it a little smaller zoom in all right so now we are at the tabbing part and it may seem tedious the little formatting i did right there but the point is that when you don't let the user click around a spreadsheet you better give them some visual indication as to where they can click and where they can input the data so that they know what's going on 
So the next step is click this cell, and you could do this individually, but I am not going to. Click all three, right click, go to Format Cells, go to Protection, and uncheck Locked. Now, this is not going to do anything when the spreadsheet is just regular like this. I can still, when I hit Enter, it goes here. When I hit Tab, it goes here. But now when we go to the Review tab and go to Protect Sheet, and we uncheck Select Locked Cells, so only Select Unlocked Cells is checked, hit OK, we no longer can click out here. Nothing happens. When I hit Enter, it just goes between the three unlocked cells. Tab does the exact same thing. So it makes it very easy, very quick to input our data. This is such a small thing, but it will save you so much time so that you don't have to skip over extraneous cells when you're inputting data. And the last thing, just to make this look a little bit better, we're going to go to the View tab and remove grid lines. And of course, if you wanted, you could remove headings, the formula bar, and minimize the ribbon. And you could remove even more with VBA, actually. So you can make it so that all the user sees is your form where they're going to input the data. They can't click anything else. They can only go between these three cells or however many cells you want. So it's actually, you can make the interface in Excel pretty useful. And the last thing that you want to do here is right click your button, which we can't do now because it's protected. So let's go ahead and unprotect. And you should probably use a password. When I go to protect sheet, you can put a password in here. So that's probably a good idea. And let's see, right click, go to assign a macro. That's how we attach a macro to a button. And just click the macro that will be in the file that you can download and hit OK. And you're good to go. So that's how you make the form. That's how you make it so that the user can only click or input data into the desired cells, the cells that you desire them to input data into. They can only go between them. Okay, this sheet is now unprotected. So when you protect it, that's when they can do it. And the thing to remember, I would say, is when you go to protect the sheet, do uncheck select locked cells. Otherwise, if you have it checked, they can go out here and click around. Now, let's try and input something. They can't do that, so they see this error message, but that's really annoying. So just make it so they can't select outside, uncheck select lock cells, and life's better for everyone. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and delete this because it is no longer important. And let's go to the input tab. Yes, delete you. All right. So this tab is named input, this tab is named data. Now, let us take a look. Actually, let me get back the formula tab. Where'd you go? There we go, formula bar. All right, so let's go to the VBA window now and let's check out the little baby macro that I've included with this workbook and attached to this button. So hit Alt F11 and don't worry, don't freak out. Anybody can use this macro. I'm going to show you everything you need to change right now, and this is it right here. Now, the first thing is, if you are not used to this window, you want to make sure you have this guy over here visible. And if you don't see him, go to the View tab and go to Project Explorer or Control-R. And open up Modules and go to Module 1. That's where the macro is located. The name of the macro is Store Data. That's what you selected from the list to attach it to the button. Things in green are comments. That means they're just notes. You can put as many as you want. Just put a single quotation mark in front of them. And everything else is the actual code. All you need to change to get this to work is right here, the name of the worksheet with a form, right here, the name of the worksheet where you want your data to go, and add one line here, okay, for every cell where, let's go back to the worksheet, the user can input a value. So one line for every one of those. And all you have to do is to change the cell reference for the cell where the value is input. So we have F3, F5, F7. This is F3, this is F5, this is F7. For each line that you put right here, go ahead and put a partner line right here. And all you have to change 
is F3, F5, F7. So all you have to change here are range references and range references. One thing to look out for though, if you do not have three input fields, so if you change the number of input fields, this right here, one should be for the first input field, two for the second input field, three for the third input field, four for the fourth, five for the fifth, and so on. And what this means is the column where the value is going to be placed in the data sheet. So this is for column one, this is for column two, this is for column three. So over here, we have column one, two, and three. And the code works under the assumption that you will have headers here. Back to the VBA window, Alt F11. And maybe the most interesting part of this code is this guy right here that gets the next empty row. So this is what allows when you go over here and you, let's go and put a new value, red, green, blue, save. That is on the next empty line. So the piece of code that does that is this guy right here. It looks tricky. But what it does, I'm going to go through it quickly, is it says, hey, go to the data sheet. Now I want you to go to a range on the data sheet. I want you to go to column A in the data sheet. I want you to go to the very last row in the data sheet. So that means this will become A, 1 million, blah, 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 whatever the last row is now. Okay, so this is the full column, basically, A, 1 million, whatever. Then I want you to go to the end all the way down. So the last row, right? And I want you to go up. So go up from the last row, like a rocket. Then you're going to hit the row that has data in it. And that's the row it's going to return, is that last row that has data in it. But I don't want that last row. I want the next row. So I'm going to offset that by one row. And I want to return that number of the row. Then I'm going to store that number in this guy. Then I'm going to use this guy down here to give me a cell address for my data. Now this specific tutorial is not a VBA tutorial, so I don't want to go too much more into it than that. But all you really need to know is that you change the name of the worksheets here and here and you add a line here for each field and a line here for each field. And you change the cell address, the range reference. And for these, just line them up. This goes in the first column of the data sheet, the second column, third column, if you have more, fourth, fifth, and so on. And this should get you a neat little working form in Microsoft Excel. That's easy to tab through, easy to go through, easy to input data into and save it on another worksheet. And like I mentioned, this is part of a larger course on teachexcel.com. So if you're interested in that, check it out in the description to this video. But for this tutorial, that's all there is. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.